Do you love C Sharp? Do you love DevOps? Do you love Cake? Of course you do. Let's learn how to combine them all together with Cake Frosting. Stay tuned to learn how. Hey, and welcome to another episode of Code Hour. I guess this happens to be episode 34, and I'm excited to present tonight Cake Frosting. And if you are a regular subscriber of my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Cake, which is C Sharp Make. And I did an episode on this. It was episode 16 and 17, and I've probably done a whole bunch of others on it, but it allows you to write DevOps in a language the whole team can understand, um, or at least if you are got a .NET team and they're into C-sharp. And so the thing that's different about Cake Frosting is it's one of four different runners, ways of running Cake, but it's unique because it allows you to run your C-sharp like a regular .NET Core console app. Now, the cake that I have shown up until this point have involved one of the runners that use the domain-specific language, the cake DSL, which is a pared-down, concise, really slim and fast, and it's interpreted language. But the tooling's not quite as good, and if you are up for it, cake frosting allows you to have much better tooling it allows you to use resharper and visual studio if you want to that it, to do that it's compiled and so if you change variables you'll know that you'll get a compiler error or tooling perhaps even before you get the compiler error it'll just pop up with red squigglies and the experience is much cleaner and maintainability is also a lot better because you don't have to worry about accidentally getting one gigantic long build.cake file, which was a mistake that I made on one of my projects and I blogged about it. And if you are interested, Cake Frosting More Maintainable C Sharp DevOps on LeeRichardson.com and also the one thing I wish I'd known before using Cake, and this is a picture of my build.cake file from about a year ago before I refactored it and made it a lot better. But Cake Frosting allows you to not even have to worry about accidentally going down that path because you have classes that can go into individual files and everything just gets tidy, you get encapsulation, everything that makes C Sharp sort of encourage better coding. Okay. Sold? Sound good? Ready to learn a little bit more? Uh, the the, the best, way, best place to get started is cakebuild.net, of course, and there's a getting started, and there's a separate section here for setting up a frosting project. Now, you have to have .NET Core 3.1, I believe, or 5, and then once you do that, you can use a .NET new minus minus install cake frosting template and that is going to install a template which is going to enable you to generate code and a first time getting started kind of project. So I'm going to do that on I'm going to do that on Lee's store. And Lee's store is the project that is based on abp.io. Check out my most recent episode for what is abp.io and how it can make you a superhero on your next project. But I'm going to, throughout the course of this project, just try to compile it and run the unit tests from Cake. And that's, that's all I'm going to do. Hopefully it'll give you enough to get a sense of what the tool is, what it gives you, and how wonderful it can be. All right, there we go. It installed, and you'll see at the top of the list we've got a Cake Frosting build script. And now I ought to be able to run the next command, which is a .NET new cake frosting. The direction, the directory that you put this in is relevant, so you might want to put it in the root. What it's going to do is put in a PowerShell and a bash script in the directory that you are currently in, and then it's going to create a folder called build where it's going to put all of its assets. So I think here is fine for me. And you'll see that I now have a PS1 file, and I have a bash file 
And if I go to build, here we go, a CS proj and a program.cs. There we go. I opened this in Visual Studio because I love Visual Studio for C Sharp projects. But there's no reason you couldn't open it in code or open it in VS for Mac. So there's a program, as you might expect from a console app, and it has a main. As you might expect, what is this? This is saying I want to instantiate cake, and I want to use this particular object here as my context object. Now, the context object in the DSL world is omnipresent. It exists everywhere, and anytime you start typing anything, it is already looking on that context object that's sort of omnipresent. But it has to be a lot more explicit here in this world. If you want arguments, you get them in the constructor for the context. And these are what tasks look like. So this is a world task. It is dependent on the hello task. So whenever you run the world task, it first runs the hello task. And these aren't a great examples. I think a better one would be a build task and a clean task. And I'll get to doing that in just a second. So how about we just run this and see what happens? I'm going to hit F5. I mean, it shows that you are able to debug. And how cool is that? Uh, you can do that in regular cake, but it's just the experience is so much better in Visual Studio. It makes life pleasant. There we go. There's our debugging experience. Very nice. If I want to run this from the command line, like I would if I was running this, uploading this, and running it in a CI or CD environment, then it would look like this. You can specify a target if you want. Uh, by default, it goes to default down here. But let's say I wanted to just run the world task. There we go. And as promised, it ran world, but it said, oh, hey, there's a dependency on hello. So it ran hello and then world. Cool. Let's do some actual work with this. Let's turn this hello task into a clean task. By the way, notice over here that this is an example of a synchronous task, and this is an example of an asynchronous task. So just gives you shows you how you can do asynchronous work if you wanted to. Let's move this into its own file because, well, that's the clean idio, idiosyncratic. <laughs> that's the uh, uh, idiomatic. Idiom there we go. That's the word I was looking for. That's the idiomatic way to write C sharp. So, oh, and you know what? This is not in a namespace. So uh, I wouldn't say the default template is wonderful. Let's clean this up just like Resharp Resharper suggested and put this into a build folder because it's a build project. We could change that if we wanted to. By the way, as noticed that there is this is dependent on cake frosting. It's the only dependency in here. So this is going to, well, it's going to clean, I suppose. And if you are used to the old cake DSL, you know that there is this wonderful command called clean clean directories. But you start typing it and there's nothing. That's because everything in the cake world is an extension method off of the context object. So you'll have to start getting used to doing context dot clean directories. And that's a nice tooling advantage of using ReSharper and Visual Studio is it looked through everything and it knew that there is a clean directories if I add a using of IO. And so if I hit tab, you'll see it automatically added my using. I didn't even need to know that that was in cake.common.io. If I didn't have a nice IDE like that uh, helping me out, then I would look that up on the documentation site. And you can see that the namespace here is cake.common.io. OK, so clean directories. And this is something which can take a glob pattern, which means you can put in a star star, and it'll recurse, which is awesome. So you might be tempted to do dot slash star star slash bin. Yeah, something like that, maybe slash debug. And if I were to run that right now, I would expect inside of Lee's store core source, yeah, application, for instance, bin debug. I would expect this to get cleared out. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. Yes, we can't 
delete the deal that we're actively running at this very point in time. That's reasonable. So perhaps we want to make sure we're getting the source directory. Seems reasonable, right? Aha, it succeeded, except it did it. Aha, it didn't. And the reason is because unlike the cake.build file where you your current directory is the location where the build.cake file is, the this is not running from the directory where the PowerShell commands are anyway. It's running from inside the build directory. So you have to always remember to dot dot slash. All right, it took a second there. Okay, uh, that, that must have worked. As point as been a core, source, application, bin, debug is empty. Excellent. Okay. Like to see that. Now, uh, well, this debug thing here would be nice if we had a configuration parameter that we were passing in, wouldn't it? So maybe we want the release directory that we're, is actually what we're building. So let's say plus. Now, how do we get parameters in? Let's take a look at that code that was generated for us right in the beginning. It had context.arguments.has argument. Well, we don't really need has argument. We need to get the argument. So let's try dot get argument. Looks good. And we want to get the, the configuration parameter. Now, there's already some things, there's actually a lot of things on the context object, and one of them is called configuration, so we're going to need to call it config. And now that we have retrieved the argument inside of the constructor, we can, now we have access to it, so we can say dot config. So this should still work just as it had before. No errors, good stuff, excellent. Okay, let's start talking about building. So we're gonna have a task here called build. And notice when I did that rename, by the way, the default task was dependent on the hello task. And because it's C sharp, it just uh, did a rename and it just renamed everywhere. It's, uh, you wouldn't get that in the DSL version of Cake. So that's real cool. And maybe we just want to clean this up a little bit and do something boring. Oh, by the way, notice there's run and there's finally, and there's no on error, and there's a should run. Those are all handy little things that used to be a little bit hard to find in the DSL, but the should run is something that gives you access to a little bit of code that determines whether or not the class should run. There we go. I like to kind of do this for my default task. I don't like to have to do anything, but I like to just say, here's what to do in case you accidentally fall into that I don't know, just how I like to do things. In any event, we now have a build task, and it's dependent on the clean task. That makes sense. And if we override run async, I don't really need asynchronous. Actually, I don't need asynchronous. We're just going to make this a regular synchronous one. So context dot and this is dot net core build and we are going to build that abp.io solution and that exists in ASP.NET core source no ASP.NET core release store dot sln dot dot remember and we need a should really specify whether we want to do it in the debug or the release. Very least. So configuration equals context.config. And let's see if this runs. We're going to minus minus target equals. Couldn't find the right target because I forgot to set it. Kind of an important thing to do. I have a feeling that didn't work. 
because it should have done a lot more work than that. Let's see what we got here. Hey, look at that. It recompiled everything, and I bet if we pop back over to this folder here with the bin debug, we'll see, yep, it got filled back up again. So it deleted everything and put everything back into that bin debug directory. Awesome. Let's try to run some tests, last thing, and we'll, we'll call it uh, good enough. Good enough for now. It'll be a short episode. Oh, okay, so I have a new test class. It's just calling Dynacore test, and it is passing in a configuration. That's all it's doing, and here's the csproj file over here, and it is pointing over to the csproj file. Now, one thing that I immediately don't like about this code is this big, long string. It would be nice if I could have a sort of a, a base directory. So. I'm not typing dot dot slash ASP.NET dash core every single time. The way I used to be able to do it in the build.cake file was I could create these convertible directories and convertible files and then just concatenate them all together. It was really convenient. You can still do that in frosting, but it's just a little bit it's a little bit different. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Let's see if this works first, and then I'm gonna to try to refactor it so that I can have this maybe this be the test directory and then concatenate it with the application test or something like that. Hey, look at that. It looks great. So it looks like zero failed and one passed. There's only one test in there, but hey, it worked. So cool. It, it ran the test in that, in that project. I'd like to see that. Now, last thing is we used to be able to have these convertible files and convertible directories. So if I were to have that, you have to you have to have a context object. And so really, there's only one place to set that up, and that's kind of here. I forgot. You don't instantiate the convertible directory path. You just call it off of the context object, which is what I was saying earlier. There we go. Okay, so the constructor for the context object, we get the tester, we can get in it. And, th and this avoids having to do path.combine, which isn't a big deal, but it just it's a convenience. So um, I don't know, I find this a little bit more work than it was with the old DSL way of doing things, but it is, it's, yeah, it's one way you can do things. It's still, still kind of nice, and I guess you get a little bit better encapsulation. So, you know, uh, when I was doing this in the DSL, my test directory, if I did something like that, you know, I might not have needed to expose it, but I was sort of forced to expose it. And that was one of the problems that I had with the build.cake file is just everything's public, everything's accessible to everything else. There's no encapsulation, there's no modularity, there's no, not very good maintainability. So over the long run, I would definitely encourage you to check out Cake Frosting. I love this tool and I will be using it on, on my future projects. Um, last word, the only thing you need to know, uh, well, there's a lot of things you, you might need to know, but adding a reference to another Cake uh, project, uh, sorry, another tool, which is, I mean, the, the Cake ecosystem is one of the great strengths of it. There's so many wonderful plugins and just plugging my plugin <laughs> real quick, I have a an Azure CLI one. I think I did an episode on it, but if you wanted to do that, that's as simple as going to manage NuGet packages and going to... whatever it is that you uh, need. So there you go. That is cake frosting. And I hope you uh, learned something and I hope this was useful. If so, please uh, like and subscribe and have a wonderful day, week, month, or I don't know, whatever, until I get around to posting another episode. Ciao.